If you've never played any of the Persona games before or gotten any sort of knowledge on how these play, I think the best way of describing them are if you put a combat system into Sims with Pokemon and some really dark subjects that no kid should ever play around with. And I love it. I haven't played every Persona game, as the only ones I hold under my belt are the third and the fourth installment on the handhelds, and I can say that both of these games are on my list of my favorite RPGs of all time. As they truly are games that any fans of this genre should play. And now we have Persona 5, and yes, I really like this one as well. So I really think it's important to make it clear on how different these games are from your typical RPGs, definitely the ones that are out there right now. Uh, and that's because the gameplay is about juggling between being a high schooler and a demon slaying phantom thief. <laughs> I will go into later the two different gameplay styles, uh, the gameplay sections, but let's first head into what I truly love about this series. The story. The narratives that the games of this franchise are giving us are all spectacularly different and fascinating. And Persona 5 is no different. The protagonist of this game, you can call this individual whatever you like, has now transferred to a new school, as he has gotten a criminal record for something I will not spoil. Once he gets to this new town, he quickly figures out that everything is not as it all seems, as he has randomly gotten the ability to enter another world filled with monsters known as shadows. And as time goes by, he and the many friends he gets on his journey realizes that they can use this world to change the hearts of cruel people, making them regret all of their heinous actions while the protagonist becomes hidden heroes amongst the public. So yeah, a weird story for a weird game, but it is, as previously mentioned, fascinating and different from every single game that's out right now at the moment. So what do I like about the story? Well, it's different, and by extension, difficult to guess what may happen. Aside from one rather important twist that, yeah, it kind of never tricked me and annoyed me. However, what makes me love Persona games and their stories are their characters. At first, I was worried that the party members that you'll get will be too similar to the people that you had in the previous game, and did see some similar traits. However, the more I spent time with them, the more different all of them felt, and now, after having finished the game, I love the entire group. What I also love is how dark this game is, just like its predecessors. Murder, suicide, corruption, and even some sick sexual themes are present, and I love it. What I will also say that I like personally more here than the previous games in the series are how its villains are presented and that you can literally experience their psyche on how they view the world. And there are a few villains that you have to take down, but... Sadly, that also goes into the negative pile as well, because yeah, as much as I did enjoy having several antagonistic figures throughout the narrative, it did undermine the main bad guy. In Persona 3 and 4, you have a deadline for each, uh, let's say, a party member focus in the main story. In the fourth installment, you have to save one of your future party members before a certain day, or else it will be game over. And here it is similar, only without the dire consequences, but in Persona 4, every section was intersected with one villain behind everything, making not only every main character tied to each other, but also made the hidden murderer way more fascinating. Yet, Persona 5, each of these sections are different villains, and they are not connected in any sort of way, so the main antagonist is nothing special. Yes, there are a couple of meetings with this individual, but a weaker villain than we've gotten before, without a doubt. I will also say that the story does drag on a bit in the end, in the combat sections, if you will, and the story kind of concludes quite similar to the previous installments as well, so it's kind of easy to predict what's going to happen. Uh, but those are my only negatives, really. Too many bad guys that are not connected, making the main antagonist a bit weaker and uh, that it drags on, that the combat section, it's important to say that the combat section drags on, not the high school stuff. Yeah, I should probably say what I mean about the combat section. <laughs> As previously mentioned, the gameplay is mainly split into two parts. Being a high school student, where you have to go to school every day, have exams, study, etc., and going into the different world, where dungeon crawling is the main dish on the menu. And both of these are mandatory. Yes, you will not get the game over by not studying and failing the exams. However, what makes the story so great are the characters, 
But the thing is, you can't simply spend time with these social links without having the, your stats leveled up. As your social skills from charm, knowledge, kindness, proficiency and guts are all important to not only improve your relationships, but also get special stuff. These stats can level up from saying something that requires guts, like uh, talking up to your teacher, or actually use your time studying. As there are a time mechanic having morning, after school and evening on your timetable to spend your day. And again, as you have a deadline, it is your job to spend that time wisely. So seriously, don't expect to have any time to kind of do whatever you want at the beginning of the game because the cat will keep telling you that you're too tired to do anything, even though it doesn't make any sense. There are many things that you can do with this time. Hanging out with confidants to earn special rewards, like gaining more XP in battle to cheaper medicine. And I have to admit, uh, the secondary characters are in my opinion much more interesting here than in the previous games. Improving statistics by doing a side activity like fishing, batting cages, studying and more. Perform requests by going into the other world for the regular folk or going to mementos, again the other world, to try to get to the bottom of the world to figure out what's going on there and to level up your characters. During the time to the deadline you can go into the palace of the individual that you are trying to change. The main villains do have their own dungeons called palaces that are all different in scale and mechanics to level up and find their treasures. And you can't rush through it in one go, as sometimes you'll have to perform a task in the real world to open up the more protected areas in the objective's psyche. And when moving through this world of cognition, you will fight shadows to gain levels. And now we come to the persona part of the gameplay, if you will. <laughs> moving through palaces of the individuals that you have to change, fighting again shadows, uh, solving puzzles and gaining more personas. Personas are pretty much the Pokemon part of the description of this game, as these creatures work as special abilities. Every character in your party has their own persona, but the thing that makes the main character special is the fact that he can have more than one. Combat is pretty simple, I have to say. You have a typical physical attack with your weapons, you have a ranged gun attack with limited ammo, and the special ones with an affinity put to it. Lightning, darkness, wind and more that will spend your SP points, while special physical attacks will withdraw from your own health pool. Most shadows differ in their stats, but if they do have a weakness to an affinity, it will put them into a down state. And if you get every enemy to this point, you have two options. Do an all-out attack to do massive damage to all opponents, or actually converse with them to get the shadow as your persona, or get an item or even cash. Money. There is a deeper system with the personas, as you can fuse some together to get even more powerful ones, etc. But I found myself not really using this too much, but... If you want to complete one social link, you'll have to do it, and I know that it is a huge part of Persona, but the thing is, this is one of the things that I personally never really cared about. As said, there are a few puzzles you'll have to complete in these palaces, however, they are not difficult at all, as I found them more as time spenders than actual brain testers. It pretty much goes into using an ability to see what lever has been pulled, and that's about it. Like, that's... The gameplay. <laughs> Basic yet fun turn based combat with tons of persona together, mediocre puzzles in the vast intriguing palaces you can go through, and awesome boss battles, oh, which all feel different from each other. When it comes to the palace owners, at least, those big boss battles, the important ones. That's all there is to talk about when it comes to the action oriented gameplay of this game, and there's a lot of good here. There are also a few negatives. Uh, three big ones, actually. Firstly, Talking to downed enemies when you use their weakness against them is a one-hit kill. The, like, you get the uh, option of doing an all-out attack, and it will do a lot of damage, but if you just ask for cash, one-hit kill. Why? <laughs> I, 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 why is there not a kind of a, uh, a... Not a puzzle, but you have to talk to them and kind of persuade them to give you cash instead of giving you one-hit kill. It didn't make sense. Maybe you get a bit less XP, I'm a bit unsure, but that was never under-leveled. So, yeah, it, a bit too overpowered if you ask me. Definitely if you are in a pickle, if they attack from behind and uh, you do less damage, they do a lot of damage and stuff like that. Just one hit kill, it doesn't make sense. Secondly, there are no auto saves in an RPG. Where if the main character of the group dies in combat, turn based combat, with enemies that have one hit kill abilities, it's a game over. That can come out of nowhere making you go about three hours back in the game because you forget to save manually. I hate that. Don't do that. I stopped playing for an entire day because that happened to me. Don't. Stupid. 
doesn't make sense. I had to foc I, It makes you focus too much on your main character rather than uh, balancing out the entirety of the group. And I don't think that's a good idea. So stop doing that, Persona. Stop doing that, Atlas. And thirdly, Mementos. Mementos is the big dungeon that you have on the... You know, it's optional, or you think it's optional until the end. You have to finish it. You have to get to the bottom. And I didn't know that. I thought it was completely optional. You can do that and you get like, I don't know, an achievement or whatever. But no, you have to go through it. And because I didn't know that, at the very end, you, ha you have to do it in one go. And I hadn't done any of it, so I was like several hours running in and like, running out of SP and stuff like that. And it was so aggravating because I love the high school stuff and, and the combat stuff, but I like to balance it a bit. I had to do it in all one go, and that's kind of the... I think that's why I said that the ending was a bit stretchy earlier. <laughs> it kind of dragged on. I think that was kind of because of it. So please, do it on their side. When you have time. I... Seriously. You'll thank me. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, three big negatives. Uh, so to alleviate that for a moment to talk about something good. The presentation of the game. Okay. This is probably one of the most artistic games I've ever played. Everything is designed awesomely. The HUD, awesome. The art style, spectacular. The designs, amazing. Seriously, everything is stylized. Heck, even the loading screens are a blast. The loading screens. The art is also pretty neat. Having animations on the faces now is an A+. Almost everything is 100% perfect. Except the graphics. <laughs> I don't really care how a game looks as long as the game plays well, but some textures here looks 100% shit. <laughs> there is nothing worth defending here. And I can't really understand how this game that had its own anime art style can have this lack of quality in some of the stuff lying around. I just can't understand it. And it doesn't help that the camera sometimes focuses on these objects. <sighs> But anyway, the music is godlike though, having the beautiful English everywhere. Which, I'm not joking, I, I actually do love it like that. The presentation, uh, everything is amazing except the graphics. The graphics are very, very surprisingly not good. But the art style, the music, the animations, just beautiful. The design as well. <laughs> because of this, I will give this game a last surprise out of Persona. You never saw that coming, did you? I've already said what I think about the game critically. Uh, I do have some personal stuff I want to talk about, just quickly. Uh, one being a huge negative that I have with a character that's integral to the story. So I won't spoil it, but this is how it works pretty much. This individual feels like they took two important characters from the Persona 4, mashed them together, put them into the story, rather a big part, Yet they contradict this individual rather heavily at the very end, the pinnacle of their character arc. I hate it, I, I hate this character, there's nothing original about them, but the community seems to like him, so... I can't really put that on the score, not that I have a score in the first place, but yeah. I would also say that this game is not for everyone, so just keep that in mind, I can't recommend it to everyone, so yeah. But, if from what I've said, if you think it sounds interesting, you might fall in love with it, so... Try it out if you're interested. For Persona fans, of course, just buy it. <laughs> it's, it's a Persona, it's an amazing game. Who knows what we'll see in the future from uh, maybe a new fighting game in the Persona franchise, maybe in the dance game. You know, Persona is such, a, such an amazing franchise, I really love it. But until then, until next time, I'm King Grim or King Yas, whatever you prefer. And I'll see ya. Hi guys! Thank you so much for watching my video, I really hope that you enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun making it. You know, that's what you should do if you want to become a creator of any sort. You need to have fun with it. Now, I will try to return as always, as I say every single time I make a video. New video every Sunday! <laughs> uh, I will say that I am right now f starting to work on my new In the Mind of, which is cool. <laughs> streaming, I want to start streaming again, a bit unsure what days, uh, but I'm already working on the case. I'm trying to find a better place where I can kind of juggle when I have time, well, if, so it won't crash against my schedule when making videos and stuff like that. <laughs> Persona 5, really liked it, and final thoughts on the game. Uh, Personally, 
I don't think it's better than the two last ones. Uh, definitely a uh, Persona 3 on the PSP because you get so much uh, content there in the sense of uh, social links, confidence, you know, stuff like that. And Persona 4 Golden is one of my favorite games of all time, so yeah, it's... Yeah, I don't know, it seemed like it lacked something. And I have a feeling that they will do the same thing that they did with the two previous game, have a uh, director's edition, if you will, like an extended game, uh, where they add in a ton of stuff, but I have a feeling that that will not happen until, you know, I don't know, we have DLC now, so potentially not that long, but, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. Anyway, thanks so much for watching, I'm King V more King Games, whatever you prefer, and I'll see you guys next time.